Okay then guys and girls, we'll make a start. So in this video, you're gonna see me taking out the main heat exchanger of this boiler in front of me. So it could be a Durotec or a Platinum or Pots and Gold or a Titanium. Uh, so the first thing I wanna do is obviously my electrical safe isolation and turn the gas off as well. And next, what I wanna be doing is turning off the flow and return isolation valves, grabbing a, a bit of manometer tube, popping it into a bucket and connecting it onto the drain tap, which is in the bottom right hand corner there. And then open up the, uh, the drain off and you wanna be getting your pressure to zero. There he is. Okay, so the pressure's at zero. And then I'm looking at this pipe here. So this is the flow pipe connected to the main heat exchanger. So water travels down here, arrives at the diverter valve, and depending on what demand you've got, it pushes the water one way or the other. So if it's in heating mode, it pushes it out to the radiators. And if it's in hot water mode, the primary system water travels down here and it gets diverted around the plate heat exchanger, back up the return, and just does a big old loop like that. So I want to undo that nut there. And also I want to undo the little nut there connection which is the connection for the expansion vessel pipe and also the little locking nut as well. We need to unspin that. So with an adjustable spanner, we'll undo this nut here. And then you should have a 22 mil fiber washer in here. So no kind of fancy sizes in that one. So a 22 mil fiber washer there. And now we want to undo the connection for the vessel and the, uh, the size of the washer in this one is a little bit odd, a little bit of an odd size. So I will reference that part number later. So now we need to unspin the locking nut. Get them over that pipe if we can. There he is, excellent. Right now we're gonna take out this screw here. So that screw there secures the return pipe into the back of the pump. So undo the screw and take it out completely. And then we should be able to push the return pipe out the back of the pump. Uh, if you can see those O-rings as well, I'll make a reference to them along the way. So moving on up, we're now inside the combustion chamber. So there's our main heat exchanger with the burner uh, and the fan and um, all sorts of bits and pieces going on. So first of all, what we want to do is remove all of the electrical connections. So the 240 volts to the fan, communication wires to the fan, flame sensing electrode. We can remove the spark and the earth. And then on this boiler here, on this model, we've got something called a, a flue proving switch. So if your flue blocks or your condense blocks up in the winter, uh, then what you're going to get is a fault code of E28. Um, so it'll probably be this, this switch has just gone bing, open circuit. And because it's linked in series with the flue temperature sensor up here, you get the same fault code. So if I remove these two blue wires and then we go up here and take out the wires for the flue temperature sensor, that, lives in a little dry pocket that flue temperature sensor does but all we're doing for now is just taking the wires off uh, now what we can do as well is take off the tube to the flue proving switch and what you might be able to see there is a little air sensing tube as well which is connected to the fan and runs all the way down to the gas valve now it's really important that when you do take it off at the end when you're putting it all back together don't forget to put that back on in the right place because otherwise your boiler won't work okay so um, let's have a look where are we. So now what we can do is undo the connection for the gas here. So that's another 22 mil nut uh, and you're gonna get uh, another fiber washer inside there. But what you've also got inside here as well is a little brass injector. Now it is quite possible that you can uh, sometimes lose that injector if you just whip it all out. Um, so what I'll do now is show you a trick on how not to lose the injector. So these four 10 mil bolts surrounding the burner plate here what we want to do is take the bottom two off completely, remove these completely. And we'll get them out of the road there. And for those of you that use a torque wrench, when you are doing these bolts up, anything between six and nine newton meters is a good torque setting. Right, with the top two, what I want to do is just unscrew them till the, the, they're at the end of the thread. Hang on a minute, give them a tweak, there we go. Right, well, get them to the end of the thread. Now, if you watch this, our injector will just fall out and it won't fall out of the boiler. And I used to just leave him to the side there so I don't forget to put him back in at the end. Right now, we can take these two 10 mil nuts off and just leave them down there. And then that should all come apart with a bit of luck. So you could be doing this on a service really, couldn't you? So taking all this apart, having a look at the electrodes, the flame sense electrode and the burner. Uh, there's your burner door seal as well. Uh, so you can reuse that if it looks in good condition. 
And there's your A-rated fan as well, so we can pop into one side for now. Right, so this is a stainless steel heat exchanger. Uh, if you want to give that a good clean out on a service, what we recommend is a white vinegar and water in a little squirty bottle. Squirt them around there. Try not to get the insulation panel wet. Uh, leave it for about two minutes. Then with a soft nylon brush, if you just kind of give it a good old sweep through, you'll get the heat exchanger looking really clean. Okay, um, so take this clip off next for the flow pipe. And then, because we've already undone it off the diverter valve, we just need to give them a wiggle and a pull. And there we go. There's another O-ring that I'll, uh, I'll mention later. I'll put a part number on there for you. So the return pipe at the back, we just need to pull the clip towards us again, because it's the same clip. Just drop him down. Because we undone him off the pump earlier, we just take him down like that. Right, so this is the condensed pipe here, off the main heat exchanger. I just need to grab a set of grips and just pinch this little clip together. And then we'll be able to drop him over the, um, the little rubber pipe like so, so drop him down, pull the pipe off, there we go. Now, I'm just going to take these two screws out of this bracket here, and then I've got the same bracket over the other side as well, so just remove these two screws, there we go, and the bracket, oops, there's the bracket, pop that screw out, and then the other screw, and then that bracket should come with it. we go here he is pop him down there and now what I want to do is undo that screw that secures the bracket that sits just above the rainwater drip tray so if I pop that screw out and then pull the bracket towards me there we go all I need to do is just push the rainwater drip tray up and now pull the heat exchanger towards me and out it comes so there we go nice and easy so I hope you found the video useful guys and girls. I hope you're staying safe and your families are doing well. Until next time, take care.